Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. I'm GC Smith, and welcome to the first of my Over the Gate Watch deck techs. So, the Over the Gate Watch spoilers finished on Friday, and I've spent the weekend trying to come up with some decks I think will be good post Over the Gate Watch. And uh, while I've been deriving those decks, I've also uh, been testing one or two of them and the first i've got in a testable state or a good state so far is the jeskai aggro deck i'm presenting to you today uh, now i say aggro but it's a bit of an aggro combo deck as you'll come to see in a bit uh, but let's start with the key pieces so first up are four jeskai ascendancy four defiant strike four slip through space and four expedite all of these pieces are really really good in this deck and absolutely amazing uh, the weakest of these pieces is probably Expedite, uh, but even then it still has its uses as you'll come to see. So, the, obviously the main strength for Jeskai Ascendancy, uh, if you haven't seen it before, and most of you probably have, is its ability to give all your creatures plus one plus one uh, when you cast a non-creature spell, as well as the ability to loot when you cast a non-creature spell. Uh, looting being drawing a card, then discarding a card. Uh... This card is absolutely amazing in this deck and enables some insane turns, uh, especially when you come to see what the creatures are in this deck are. Uh, Defiant Strike, Slip Through Space, and Expedite all incredibly powerful as well in conjunction with cards like Jeskai Ascendancy, as well as the creatures we're playing, uh, because they're all cheap, really cheap cantrips that have additional effects. So Defiant Strike increases your damage by a little bit more. Uh, slip through space makes your creature unblockable and expedite gives your creature haste uh, and the, obviously the big strengths of expedite and defiant strike is they can be cast on our opponent's creatures end of turn to draw us cards when we need to um, obviously I think actually the most powerful of these is probably slip through space and uh, when I come to do a gameplay video probably or a uh, few gameplays uh, slip through space is one of the cards I often conserve because uh, you want to use that at very key points. Uh, but yeah, combining these with the Jeskai Sensei as well as the creatures just provides so much power as we move forward to the creatures uh, to really show you what I mean. So the creatures we're running are four Storm Chaser Mage, four Monastery Swift Spear, and four Seeker of the Way as the main bulk of the creatures. Uh, there is one other creature we're running in this deck, but I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, so as you'll see, all of these creatures have prowess. Uh, which again combines really well with our cheap cantrips and Jeskai Ascendancy. Uh, all of these creatures uh, have just shown their value to me. Uh, Monastery Swift Spear is, I think, the least impressive of, uh, impressive of them uh, to me so far, but even then, that's not by a large margin. And its ability to even just chip in for one point damage turn one uh, really helps you close up games. Uh, Storm Chaser Mage obviously being a cheap hasty flyer is amazing because it can come out of nowhere, avoid every blocker and basically kill your opponent in conjunction with Jeskai Sensei and uh, some of your other cards. And Seek of the Way has proven to be quite nice uh, in playtesting. I've come against other people that are trying to do the whole can trippy aggro strategy but no one else is using Seek of the Way. Instead choosing to run... Um, I think it was Zergo Bell Striker, which was hilarious because turns when I get to swing for 10 lifelinking damage are turns which basically secure me the win. Um, my opponents had very little to deal with that. Um, all these creatures, again, just really good value. But a creature I'm going to show you next, which you may not be expecting, is Wall of Resurgence. Now, I know a lot of people right here are getting kind of like, oh, why is there a 0-6... Uh, Two, uh, zero, 06 or 3 defender in this deck and that's because of its ability to uh, when it enters the battlefield put 3 or you may put 3 one, 1 counters on target lands you control if you do that land becomes a zero, 0 elemental creature with haste that's to the land uh, this ability is just really useful. Um, Wall of Resurgence on its own is a st stupidly good blocker. Uh, blocks Seed Rhino, Tassiga, all the aggro decks, which again gives us more game against the aggro decks. Uh, it also creates a big threat against those aggro decks, so 3 3 is nothing to be sniffed at. Uh, but more importantly, that 3 3 is a land which allows us to tap it for mana, cast a spell, have it untapped to Jeskai Ascendancy. That spell will draw, we'll also get to loot, we'll then tap that land as well again and keep going that way so it gives us a way to cast many more spells and turn either you play wall of resurgence or the turn after you play wall of resurgence 
and it just has huge impacts in those games, and it has allowed me to dumb, do some very, very silly turns. Now, I did mention it was a aggro uh, combo deck, um, and the main reason that there's a combo, in my opinion, is because of the following cards. Uh, it is four uh, Titan Strength, three Treasure Cruise, and three uh, Team of Battle Rage. Now, uh, Titan Strength isn't really more of a combo thing, but it does just power a lot of damage through and combines really well with all our creatures, especially the hasty ones, um, because it allows us to play a hasty threat, attack, and by one using only one additional card, hit them for most likely five or more damage out of nowhere, um, which basically can kill some opponents if they're not expecting it or they tapped out just to survive. Uh, the Treasure Cruise, again, is really good in this deck for stocking a hand with looting and cheap one-mana cantrips. We very quickly get to seven or more cards in our graveyard, making it basically a one-mana Treasure Cruise. And Team of Battle Rage, well, everyone knows the Team of Battle Rage with high power creature, whoop, double strike trample. And again, Team of Battle Rage, the combo's kind of with Team of Battle Rage and, um... The Titan Strength for three mana, you basically kill your opponent. You know, uh, on a what is it on the weak uh, weakest base creature uh, that we attack with, be monstrous Swift Spear. Really, uh, we it goes from a one two to uh, three uh, two three with the prowess trigger from the first spell. Then it gets plus three plus one, so it goes up to a five three uh, five four. Uh, so it goes up to 5-4 power, then you cast Team of Battle Rage, that so goes up to a 6-5, gain double, strike and trample, so it'll just deal 12, uh, which is a tremendous amount of damage to do out of nowhere, uh, in combination with other things, um, or uh, to do really early in the game, because you can do 12 damage turn 3. Uh, which is really early in the game, and you probably already dealt at least two points of damage by that point, and they've fetched, so they've probably dealt themselves a lot more damage. Uh, so, on to the real estate now. Uh, we've covered most of the core parts of the deck. Uh, we want to cover the land. Uh, so, first up are four Mystic Monastery, four Battlefield Forge, and four Shivan Reef. Uh, Mystic Monastery is here because we don't always need a turn one aggressive start, and it's just really good at fixing all our colours. Uh, it's also the best land that we want to turn into a creature with uh, Wall of Resurgence, uh, because it taps all three of our colours, meaning that we can play any cantrip with it and just go off. Uh, Battlefield, Forge, and Shift and Reef are here because they provide combined all three of our colours, untapped, uh, which is really important. Um, we always, you know, there are times where we just want to be able to play a creature turn two, or go off turn two or three, and these help provide it. Um, it's really, really good. Uh, the other creatures, or the other lands we run, are two Wandering Thermal and one Needle Spires. Now, there's a question mark here because uh, you might actually want to run uh, one Wandering Thermal and two Needle Spires, depending on the match. Um, that might be a sideboard issue because I'm not sure what this sideboard for this deck really needs. Uh, both of these have been really good in my games. Uh, actually, this mat get deck is actually really surprisingly good at grinding out control and hover decks. It's been tremendously good at that. Um, and because of that, man lands are just, again, really good when your opponent gets down to a position where they've got nothing. Um... And both of them can just be combined really well. Again, with Jeskai Sensei, you activate it, turn it into a land, use it to cast multiple cantrips, get loads of power, kill them, um, make it unblockable, that kind of stuff is just really, really good. Um, and uh, the last few lands are two islands and a plains. Uh, basic lands, again, they enter untapped. We don't really have any room for fetch lands on top of this, though, so we just need to fill off our curve of lands. Uh, as you might be able to tell, this deck only has 18 lands. Um, that might be a mistake, and if I ever do a revised version of this deck, le uh, deck list, I'll let you know then. Uh, but currently, I think 18 is working out fine. Um, we've got our cantrips that really help us hit land, and that's really why we can get away with only 18 land, because we're running all of these uh, cantrips and ways to draw cards. Um it also means we're drawing dead less likely in late. Uh, like I said, one of the benefits, I think, for going grindy is this ability to play a hasty threat out of nowhere with all of these cantrips to back it up. Um, 
or lands and all these different things combine really well. And so by only running 18 lands, we really give our deck the best chance of being someone late game. So I don't actually have a sideboard uh, for this deck yet. Um, that's something I might have to do in a separate video. Uh, I don't really have a bead on what other decks will really exist within the format. And that's something we need to see closer to the Pro Tour, maybe at the first Star City Games Open, to really decide what the deck tech, uh, the sideboard needs to be. Um, my current guesses are probably you want some sort of uh, uh, Stumber Denial, um... Uh, some denial you want maybe some valorous stance in the sideboard uh valorous stance helps against the uh kill target creature decks or damage to your creature decks it also allows you to kill a vino in case that is causing you problems uh because high toughness can still reduce the amount of damage you kill in the next turn um uh there may be other things you want to consider um Maybe something like, uh, not Mastery of the Unseen, uh, the one mana white enchantment that when you play a non-creature uh, spell, put a law counter on it, and then you can activate it and turn it into a creature, or pay three mana to add a law counter to it. Uh, the Myth, Myth, Myth Realize, that's it. Uh, that card actually I think is really good in this deck. It combos really well with what we're trying to do. And is really good against control again because it effectively is like another man land against them, except one that grows throughout the game. You know, it grows with our natural strategy, um, and is basically permanent prowess, which again can be quite scary for our opponent to deal with, especially since we can activate it and give it unblockable, and it's immune to a lot of the sorcery speed removal spells, which is good. Um, again, you may want to consider other cards in your sideboard depending on what you want, like disdainful stroke or. Um, just whatever you want, really. Uh, it's up to you uh, to decide from this point on, or based on testing, really, I'll come up with something later. Uh, but that's really the deck for now. Uh, again, I've really enjoyed playing this deck. It's an aggro deck that has a lot of lines of thinking. You've got to play in certain ways, and it's just been really successful online so far for me in testing. So I think hopefully some of you out there will have uh, good success with this, and hopefully some of you uh, have the pieces to uh, pick it up and play uh, straight on release and have good fun at the FNM. If you do play it, uh, I'd like to let uh, hear what you say or hear what you uh, think of the deck, uh, what are your experiences and results. Uh, but I do think this deck's quite good, uh, especially against other aggro decks, uh, thanks to Seek of the Way and War of Resurgence main board. And I think that's kind of a little bit of tech that maybe most people won't be considering. So, uh, thank you very much for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.